Hi friends, I am Dharmala Shri from Smart Leaders IAS. In today's session, we will see about the recent developments with respect to North Korea and US, uh, which happened very recently in June 12 Singapore summit. So before going on to the topic directly, we will see what are the happenings historically with rela related to the Korean crisis. So let us move on to the topic now. So we will see a very little background about the Korean crisis. So when the Korean crisis gets intensified, it all started uh, during the time of Sino-Japanese war. It was around 1894 to 95 period. So this time, it was a tussle between China's supremacy in the Korean Peninsula or whether it is a Japanese uh, supremacy in the Korean Peninsula because both have started at their own industrialization pace and Japan is more advanced by this time and imperialistic Japan doesn't want to give Korea to China. So they occupied uh, Korea and uh, they they have told to the world that Korea is unified into Japan. So this was the first time that Koreans felt that they lost their sovereignty. So now some nationalistic Koreans were fled away from the Korean land to China. So there they started the base from the communist idea slowly slowly from 1900s onwards. And especially it was intensified when during the Russia-Japanese war in 1904-1905. Because in 1904-05 Russia was to be withdrawn from the Korean Peninsula according to the Russia-Japanese war because Japan emerges victory in the Asia Asian crisis. So here Japan once again reaffirmed its stance on Korea that it is Korea as unified into Japan in 1904 and 1905 Russia-Japanese war. So what happens as of now the nationalistic feeling in the Korean, uh, Korean Peninsula started its uh, buds and uh, rising it to a next level. So here the communist tendency started developing more intense more in, in a very intense way so all have fled to soviet and as well as to the uh, nearby china so they are uh, crossing the el river which is the border between the korea and uh, china so now slowly there are two groups started emerging one is the communist group and other one is moderate group in the korean peninsula so this the scenario will change after the period of world war ii so we'll see what happens in the world war ii scenario In the World War II, Japan was about to defeat in 1945. So, US bombed the Hiroshima and the Nagasaki. So, it asked the Japanese forces to surrender. So, this time, it was utilized by China and the communist forces from Korea, which is operating in the uh, mainland of China, were able to go to the Korea, the two in the northern boundary. I can say this area, North, uh, northern Korean area. So, now they've started gaining their supremacy and uh, almost to an extent. The same way, 1948, August 15, Japanese forces surrendered in the South Korea, that is in the capital, Seoul. So this is considered as a Republic of Korea. In South Korea, they have considered it as Independence Day. And we all know that the end of the Co World War II is the emergence of the Cold War era. So here, before the World War is going to end, and US forces marching from the South Korea, I mean South southern side of the Korea, as to the northern forces that is from Soviet, so they asked the Soviet to stop in the 38th parallel. So it is not yet demarcated that time, that is in 1945-46 period, but the US asked the Soviet forces to stop at the 38th parallel. So here it slowly becomes a demilitarized zone and uh, in future it becomes a boundary between North Korea and the South Korea. And here after the Japanese forces in the Seoul surrendered, the South Korea becomes a separate entity because here moderates who were under the influence of US forces started governing the state and uh, here comes the conflict because in North Korea communist forces wants to form the government and in the southern side of the Korea moderate forces wants to form the government they were influenced directly by the US and here to an extent by Soviet and the, to an extent by the China so it resulted in the Korean War 1950 it is nothing but the uh, Cold War continuation in the Asian Peninsula so here what happens in the North Korea started attacking the South Korea at first in 1950 and it continued till the 1953 with the support from this side American side and that's it from China and the Russian side ad, uh, aided by the Stalin and uh, initially America doesn't want to enter into the Korean War but slowly it realized that if it failed in the Korean War or uh, it will result in the marching of communist forces in in everywhere that is the com good versus evil battle will begin so communists should not win so in order to fight the communists u.s forces came and aided by the truman doctrine in 1953 so agreement was signed 
and it is called as an Amstis Treaty and not Peace Treaty. Still now, there is no peace treaty signed between these two four countries like North Korea and South Korea. So technically, the war is still continuing and now there are steps taken by the government's board states to conclude a peace treaty. Hereby, the war becomes in. So almost 50 years, technically, the war is going on between North Korea and the South Korea. So what happens? 38 parallel was drawn and uh, there are al almost 250 kilometers boundary which is called demilitarized zone was set up between North Korea and the South Korea. Uh, number of times line of crossing and the violations were done on both sides whether North Korea or South Korea both constantly engaged in the uh, interruptions. So this demilitarized zone was never at peace. So whenever there is some violations started so first point of incident is here and the next one is what happened after the uh, Korean independence that is Korean war after 1953. So here North Korea which is under the communist so it becomes a dictatorship government and the South Korea becomes more modern and democratic so it became it is capitalistic form government also. So here it was aided by directly by the US government. So the capitalistic and the modernity entered into the South Korea. Now so North Korea still it is suffered from poverty and hunger. So what happened? Why North Korea become nuclear power country? After completion of the Korean War in 1953, North Korea wants to develop its nuclear program because it, it is becoming isolated, surrounded by the force because one side it is by Japan and other side it is from South Korea and from here onwards, US conducted military, uh, military drills almost annually in order to show its readiness in the Korean Peninsula. And only support for North Korea is its ally, China. So by this time, in 1960s and 70s, North Korea started asking help from Soviet as well as China to develop the nuclear missile program. But what happened? Both China and Russia uh, refused this thing, but both have helped in, in one part, that is peaceful nuclear energy program. So they helped. And in 1970s, North Korea started developing its own indigenous program. So this helped to uh, somehow to uh, know the know-how, technical know-how of making the uh, nu uh, nuclear enrichment programs for missile technologies as well. So North Korea developed in 1980s and 85, exactly 1985, North Korea became a non-proliferation treaty member. So it ratified the non-proliferation treaty in 1985. In 1990s and th 2000s, aids from Pakistan with respect to the technological know-how of uh, nuclear facilities and nuclear missile technology transferred to the North Korea and it slowly started developing weapons of mass destruction and uh, by the end of 2000s when IAEA and the US suspected a about the enrichment of uranium in the North Korea, North Korea denied the allegations but somehow in 2005 it says that it won't allow the IAEA to come in to the territory and North Korea walked out of the NPT and in 2006 first nuclear tests have been conducted. It was an underground test and it was confirmed by the international sources that North Korea conducted the test and it is a violation of NPT because already North Korea went out of the NPT. And in 2007, in order to put the North Korea on the table and to start the peaceful program, so six party talks were started in 2007 and it becomes one of the successful talks because in 2009, North Korea says that we will abolish the main uranium enrichment facility that is Yangbun nuclear, uh, nuclear enrichment facility. So it abolished that and 2009 what happened again it started launching a satellite right, but it was suspected by all other nation major nations like Germany and US as a missile launch. So it, it is considered as a violation of the six party attack. So what happened North Korea again uh, was criticized by the major political people and in 2012 again a period of detente was developed. So in order to put the North Korea on the table and to start the denuclearization process, however, it went in vain because from 2013 to 2017, almost six nuclear tests were conducted by the North Korea and the latest one is Fasam Fortin in 2017 and it, it is a version of two ICBM tested by the North Korea successfully and it, it has the capability to reach the Guam of US territory. From the time of September 2017, world was thinking that North Korea has to be contained otherwise it will bring the war kind of situation in the Korean Peninsula because already it crossed the Sea of Japan and it has a warning signal to Japan and the third from US has been entered into the Korean Peninsula it is it shows its readiness to support South Korea and the Japan and uh, China the only ally of North Korea.
to put the more pressure on the North Korea to start the denuclearization. So here comes the twists and turns in 2018 things. So we will see what happened more interestingly in 2018. North Korea believes that nuclear power becomes a deterrent to its survival, the first thing. And second thing is the sovereignty crisis. There are few concerns why North Korea chose the nuclear path. So North Korea justifies that at, on showing the Iraq and uh, showing the Libya and as well as uh, Ukraine for their own survival, nuclear power, they consider it is their own deterrent. So even it cited the Iran's deal, which was cancelled by the uh, President Trump, which was successfully signed in uh, during the Obama's period. By citing all these reasons, North Korea justifies that they want to become nuclear in order to maintain peace in the Korean Peninsula. However, tensions went to new height in the 2017 and in the initial uh, months of 2018, According to Chairman Kim, nuclear tests conducted by North Korea are only to denuclearize it because it gives a balance or uh, it gives an equal table for North Korea to, and his own regime in the international arena. So now, the recent development is, first one, South Korea and the North Korea have met in the 38th parallel before the Winter Olympics 2018 and he allowed the North Korea to participate in the Winter Olympics in February 2018 and it was viewed by the world as a first step towards the peace talks and the second one development is Pumjong declaration in April 2018 and the third one which is expected that Kim and Trump will meet in the Singapore summit the June 12th summit Kim and President Trump it was very successful because the first step towards the peace was started and it is a win for the diplomacy and the backdoor channels and the first step towards putting the nuclearization arms. What is the agenda in the, in the Singapore summit? First step, they have told that denuclearization process will start. And for Trump said, he told that he will halt the military drills conducted in the Korean Peninsula. And this will give you a major peace time for the North Korea to buy peace. And it will start the denuclearization process. However, American president is giving handshake to one hand. Uh, on the other hand, he is keeping his stick because he says that sanctions will remain until the denuclearization will be completed. On the other hand, he wants the repatriation to be done and the political prisoners in the North Korean Peninsula has to be removed. So these are the takeaways from the Singapore summit and so what will be the future? So here, both have been in a very positive way and they are saying that it will create a new history and the immediate effect is that it stopped the acceleration of tensions in the Korean Peninsula and it will give temporary peace to not only to the North Korea, South Korea, it will give peace to Japan and as well as the China. The tensions in the Korean Peninsula as of now it will get relaxed. And the second point is that whether the peace will continue or not, it is not so because both persons were not in a uh, stable in their decisions. American president has enough capability to turn over the tables on his side and his counterpart Chairman Kim is uh, equally capable to turn the table on his own side. So we will see wait and watch approach but to the Japan and uh, South Korea they will see the denuclearization process once it started they will see a sigh of relief and for the world whether it is a reunification of peaceful North Korea and South Korea or the peaceful Korean Peninsula it is up to the coming days situations.